Hey guys, it's Nate, and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be diving into part 3 of my video log series about my custom guitar build. Hope you enjoy. In part 2, we finished off with the rough carving of the two face pieces of the guitar. I have left the link for part 2 right here, and you can find both parts leading up to this part 3 on my channel, so check them out if you haven't in order to understand the process of how I got up to this point. After I returned to the shop, the first thing I had to do was cut the holes that would eventually house the guitar pickups. I made quick work of this with the scroll saw. I flipped the pieces over to address the unintentional mistake I made on the face pieces. When I used the double sided tape for both of the pieces in order to carve them, I used way too many and it took quite a while to remove them from the back side of the wood. I needed to make sure that I removed all the tape as this was the surface of the back side of the face pieces that would be used to join to the body, so I needed to make sure that they were free from debris. In order to aid in this removal, I used acetone which helped to loosen up the bulk of the tape pieces. The back side of the faces needed to be carved out to match the hollowed cavities within the body of the mahogany. This was done with a drill press and forester bits to take a bulk of the material out. Since the opposite side of the face pieces had a taper on the edge, I had to taper the amount of material being taken off at the edge so I didn't accidentally penetrate through the thickness of the piece. After I finished taking a bulk of the material out on both pieces, I carved out a straight edge with the chisel. I then sanded out the two cavities in order to get rid of the markings left by the forester bits. The face pieces were almost ready for glue up but needed some slight adjustments on the edges to help align the pieces with the body, so this was done with the bandsaw. While cutting the face pieces to their final shape before gluing, I also cut the rough shape of the guitar headstock. If you haven't already, be sure to smash that like button to help with the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you're feeling generous, please subscribe and ring the bell so to be notified when my new videos are uploaded so you know when the next guitar vlog is posted. Thanks guys. With the headstock roughly cut out, I moved back to the neck and cut the frets closer to their final depths. I used a block after I cut the frets that has set taper in it and attached sandpaper in order to get a consistent taper on the fretboard. After a couple days of being away, I came back to work on the guitar and was ready to finally get the face pieces glued to the body. Since I wouldn't really be able to easily access the sound holes after glue up, I focused on getting them pretty much exactly to the shape that I wanted with sandpaper and hand files. I also smoothed the back side of the piece with sandpaper to give a smooth transition as I would not be able to access this side of the piece once the pieces were glued.
I finish this process with checking each sound hole to one another to attempt to make them as identical to one another as possible. The final adjustment needed before glue up was to true up and flatten the back side of the face pieces so that way they would join perfectly to the flat top of the body. This was done by securing a large piece of sandpaper to a flat surface using double sided tape. I sanded both pieces until they were completely flat. And after removing the tape, we were finally ready to glue these face pieces up onto the body. I prepped one half of the body along with the corresponding face piece with acetone to remove any dust and debris before adding the glue. Once the acetone was completely dry, I began to glue up by adding liberal amounts of glue to all surfaces that would contact between the two pieces of wood. It is critical that both pieces were completely flush to each other, so a boatload of clamps would be needed in order to secure the piece from slipping. This is difficult because the face pieces have contours that do not allow the clamps to set flat in most positions, so readjustments had to be made if movement of the face piece had occurred. Once we got about 20 clamps onto the piece, we put it aside. We are only doing one side at a time so that we can accurately control the location of the face pieces. This way, when this half dries, it will be much more manageable to attach the other piece to it rather than trying to glue them both up at once. With a razor, I removed any excess glue that might not allow the other side of the piece to sit flush when we glue up the other section onto the body. I once again moved to the neck to remove a bunch of material from the fretboard as it needed to be still reduced about 1 16th of an inch. I then moved to the sides of the neck to make a flush transition between the fretboard and the underlying mahogany piece. My final task was to take away material from the bottom of the neck and begin rounding out the back of the neck. While this isn't completely finished, the neck is well on its way to being in its final form. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the build up to this point. If you're feeling generous, please think about subscribing to my channel to get notified when the next part of the build gets uploaded, as well as liking the video for the YouTube algorithm. Thanks again for stopping by, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.